All right, let's get back to the Bahamas right now where the pictures tell the story. Vast destruction left in the wake of Hurricane Dory and the prime minister calling it generational devastation. And you can see it everywhere. Before and after pictures, we can show you right here, show the international airport on, on Great Abacos Island, completely underwater. Nowhere for rescue and relief planes to land. No way to get injured people out and supplies in. And here you can see what was once uh, one of the neighborhoods. It's called the mud, one of the impoverished neighborhoods there. It looks like every single home is submerged or wiped off the map. The Abaco Islands are really ground zero for the storm's impact. And CNN's Paula Newton was the first correspondent to report live from there yesterday. She's now spent 24 hours on the ground and she's joining me right now. Paula, how do you describe what you've seen in the last 24 hours? You know, the residents of those Abaconian Islands, Kate, want you to know that as bad as those pictures are, this storm defied description. They're telling us, look, and they want you to know as bad as those pictures are, they went through the equivalent of a 36-hour horror movie. They were dodging projectiles flying out of the sky from debris in people's homes. They were pulling mattresses off of their beds to hold in doors and windows and garages that were coming over on top of them. They cannot even describe what they have been through. And even to them, when they see the destruction in front of them, Kate, they cannot believe those who have survived, they cannot believe they have survived this storm. The Abaconians I spoke to, these are hardened people with these storms. They've gone through, and you can name them, right? You can go through Francis, you can go through Lloyd, all of those storms, Jean, that they've been hit with. They're saying no. Hurricane Dorian was something that they have never seen strike anywhere in that area, and they are wondering what comes next. I spoke to one man who was basically on his kitchen cupboards. He was basically had this much room to breathe between the ceiling and his kitchen cupboards. He went under. His son pulled him up, and he said to himself, I found the strength because I didn't want my son to see me die that way. When the eye finally went over them, they swam and then walked to other safe and higher ground. Those are the kind of stories coming out from everywhere. People going from room to room in their homes, Kate, trying to find shelter. They'd be in one room, it would blow out. They'd go into the bathroom, a window would blow out there. Many of these people obviously trying to shelter the more vulnerable people in their families, kids and older people. We have spoken to many of them. Uh, honestly, a lot of them traumatized right now, and, and Kate just wondering what happens next. Well, and honestly, I mean, it, it is hard to understand how folks survive this when you see some of the images that are coming coming out from there. I mean, and most of the deaths so far have been that have been reported, which is obviously they believe they don't even have their arms wrapped around it yet, has come from those islands. I mean, what are folks telling you? about the number of people that, that they're missing or, or people that they know have perished there? You know, a lot of people have already spoken to me about people that they know have passed away. And you're talking in the dozens, and they know that those deaths haven't been reported yet. Of course, you have to wait for the official word from government. But, you know, in speaking to people, they would then give me the roll call of going through neighbors and friends that they hadn't heard from or that they know were either incredibly injured and needed to be medevaced out um, or that they still just couldn't find. And those are the heart-rending stories, Kate, the people that they just can't find. You know, communication basically went down sometime around Sunday. And these are people, again, that have no idea what's going on. And I have to add, Kate, remember, they didn't even know why the storm was still there. This storm lasted at least double the time that a normal storm w w would hold. And they're wondering what's happening. Every time a new gust of wind would come up or a thunderstorm would come up until the st sun started shining yesterday, they had no idea. They didn't know if they were in for another barrage of hell. And for that reason, they are now slowly starting to rebuild a little bit of communication. The satellite phones that are on those islands are lifelines right now. Everyone's spreading the word. Your mom's okay. Your dad's okay. Your uncle's okay. Your niece is okay. I found this pe these people. This person was medevaced out. And it's all from word of mouth. But, Kate, it is just so devastating and traumatizing for the people there. I mean, the people I speak to say they just can't process it. They, they just do not know how to comprehend what they've just been through. They are trying to be strong, and yet they know that, as the Prime Minister says, this is generational change. They know their lives will never be the same again, at least not on those islands, and that those islands will never be the same again. And Paula, you spent the night on the island. I mean, what was it like overnight?
You know, we were on Man of War, and my thanks, those people have no idea that, that they can't hear me. Obviously, now they don't have communication, but for all the friends and family that know those people on Man of War, our thanks go out to them. They are doing everything they can. They are resourceful, self-reliant people, many of them born on an island two and a half miles long. It is dark. We could see the stars last night, and that was a relief. You hear the hum of one or two generators. They are all pulling together. We were in the home of Angel and Marsha Cruz. Um, you know, we, we slept on mattresses that had been up against the window, Kate, to save their children, Ariana and Channing. They couldn't be more lovely. <laughs> they started to take food out of the refrigerator and just cook it up, because that's what we all know we do when the power goes out, just trying to get through from day to day. But now the shock is starting to set in, and people on that island Island are looking around. Kate, we'd see boats turned absolutely upside down. We were showing video to the Cruz family that we had shot with our drone. They didn't recognize their own streets. They did not recognize their own streets. And they were pointing out to us things that had been flipped over, you know, pieces of homes and, and boats that were just meters away from where they should have been. And again, trying to comprehend uh, where they go from here. Um, they're all coming together. They have golf carts on that island. They are all trying to help each other out. Yesterday, uh, we came in, uh, some other helicopter fights got in. They got some people out that were the most vulnerable, and now they're trying to get out the families. They have food for about 10 days, which is great. The grocery store was not that damaged, and they are keeping it together there. But here's the issue. You know, kids were supposed to start school. They don't know what to do now. They know that the schools where they went to school have been completely destroyed. Uh, and they're wondering what comes next. But again, Kate, for anyone who survived this, incredibly, incredibly grateful. Can they even, do they even know at this moment what's the first thing that they need? I mean, because one of the great challenges is not only just getting aid uh, into their hands, but even just getting aid onto those islands because of the mess that is either any airstrip or would yeah. be any port or anywhere that they, you know, the beaches or everything that's in the in the water there. Right. What do they need most at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're clever on Man of War and a lot of the other islands. So the first thing they did was started to clear uh, debris and why they know they needed the uh, helicopters to land. They cleared the baseball field for us. We landed. Uh, so it was clear of debris, and that's where the helicopters have been going in. They got in the water, Kate. They've got the food. Okay, check. That's done. Their main concern now are things like sanitation. They are so afraid of disease right now. Uh, in many areas, and not where I was on Man of War, but on, uh, you know, uh, in the other areas of the Abacos, you know, they know that there are, are dead bodies yet, they tell me, that have not been recovered. They are starting to worry about things like cholera. So they need some type of a cleanup effort en masse to begin. After that, they need some kind of sanita sanitation, uh, something to do with the human sanitation issues, all the garbage, things like that. And after that, they need that all important infrastructure. There are roads that are completely impassable either because of debris uh, or water. They need to be able to do that. They need to be able to use their phones. They can't communicate with anyone right now no power whatsoever and of course even if you've got a generator fuel where do you get your fuel around uh, Manowar I can tell you they had certain homes that had been storing fuel they went to get it so they can run a few generators but that's really all they had and again self-reliance is key you know the one thing they want everyone to know is they want to know where the government is they want to hear from the government and from this issue of security which we have to talk about there have been reports of course of vi violence and looting uh, they want the National Defense Forces from Bahama on those islands as soon as possible we saw certainly uh, military helicopters in the air last night, Kate, when we were on the island, they would come around with their spotlight. Uh, perhaps just, they didn't land, but perhaps just trying to make sure everything was under control. Uh, that was some type of a relief, but they want them on the islands just trying to keep some order. Uh, because as people, as this whole devastation wears on, as people want to know that they are going to get food, water, and medical help. And when they don't, they obviously, uh, you know, they break. And so they're wanting to know that that kind of civility I think we just lost Paula's shot. Paula Newton in Nassau after 24 hours, really, at ground zero for this hurricane in the Abacos Islands. Paula, thank you so much. We'll get reconnected. She's going to be sending in some of her material and her, she and her team and the work that they've been doing to get these images out and get their stories out. We're going to be bringing that to you. Much more to come on that. And if you're looking at this and you're saying, how can I help when I'm 
helpless to do anything, there is something you can do. You can help the Bahamas. You can go to our website, cnn.com slash impact. We've compiled a list of nearly a dozen charitable organizations that are helping in the Bahamas. 